So this is mainly a support video for the uh, printables.com uh, model you can find in the links down below. It's uh, split in three parts. First part is the final installation, uh, which gives you an idea of what this is all about. Second part are the adjustments you can make in FreeCAD to uh, uh, adjust it to your needs. And the third part uh, are the slicing settings you need to consider to, before you print it. So that's it. Have fun. So let me show you the rainwater collector. It goes in here. This is the inner parts. The nut and the mounting piece. And the inner parts uh, have little holes here and here because if you do not install this in an open environment but it's a fixed install where you cannot look inside and uh, cannot reach inside you want to avoid those dropping in there at all costs so what you can do is take these parts how they are how they will be attached in the uh, final mounting piece of string or I have this plastic piece lying around through there then you have something to grip on so that it cannot fall down there all the way I will also put on the mounting piece and nut So what I have now is this, this thing and these pieces can therefore not fall in there all the way because the weight is higher here. What you will want to take also is uh, the screwdriver, screwdriver. Then you take the first piece, go round, up, inside, take the second piece, go round, higher than the other one. Now it's a bit fiddly, like this. This is where the screwdriver comes in. With the screwdriver can you can, and you can also see this from the side. So there's no need to make no, have it open at the top. This looks good. And now from you can attach this the mounting piece first. And if you do a final install, you can also put some uh, silicone or construction adhesive around here just to seal it, but it's a rainwater collector, so if something goes along this side, it shouldn't be too bad. Put it over here like this. And take the nut, and the nut has uh, a little ring here, and a, counter, a counterpart in the uh, mounting plate. And for final install, you can also put some silicone or uh, something else in there to seal it. And take this nut. Tighten it down by hand, this should be good enough. Then you can remove your security pieces. And now you should be finished. You can attach a hose just like this with a hose clamp or something like that, and you should be done. The Rainwater collector is tilted at an angle upwards like this so that it cannot go all the way down here uh, If something heavier or a lot of water goes down here it should be impossible for this to go too low There's still an angle of uh, 
5 to 10 degree like this now and there is a hole in the middle which is a design feature um, where uh, heavy pieces or leaves or something can still go through if that's uh, at all desired uh, and they will however not go into your uh, rainwater collector so that's it have fun so i'm not a free cat professional but uh, this is the rainwater collector i came up with a lot of tinkering and you may want to adjust it this is a preset for um, 100 millimeter diameter rainwater pipe um, they are usually made from zinc and very common here in uh, Europe and in Germany in specific, I think. And um, it um, has uh, four parts, the left and right a rainwater collector, rings, those, both, uh, those rings. They have uh, uh, threads here, it's just half but uh, it's enough to hold it then we have um, the nut which goes onto the threads and uh, the mounting washer slash mounting plate which goes onto the pipe itself so the mounting washer goes uh, so the usual steps are the you put in the collector rings I have a video which uh, shows this and then uh, put on the mounting washer and then put on the nut <clears throat> then you're done and to adjust this I have this uh, dimensions table uh, I have tested some val values uh, where it works out but if you change something you may have to redo the chamfers and um, I don't know if this is uh, a free cat topological naming problem or something else but um, um, that's how I ended up with this uh, anyway so um, some things are very simple maybe uh, make this pipe hole, uh, pipe hole diameter a little bit bigger it recalculates and then you have a bigger hole yeah. and it's also always resets to gray after this <clears throat> now this hole which goes through the pipe this hole is bigger now this is you will now need a 60 millimeter um, hole saw so you can best set this for the hole saw you have at hand they are and you can also drill it a slight bit bigger than you print it. This is what I would recommend anyway. So let's see what we what else we can do. I reset this to um, 54. The wall thickness is not so interesting, but the diameter of the hole is interesting. So if you uh, want to make a very small rainwater collector, um, you can set it, for example, to 20. Takes a while to calculate. And now you see this is very, very small hole in the middle. And then rescale the whole pipe if you like maybe 60 millimeter so as you can see this is pretty much the lowest limit i would uh, not even recommend for 60 millimeter it's a bit big um, maybe 80 millimeter would be um, the most interesting value in between because um, these thread sizes I have used here, um, these thread sizes are fixed. It would not otherwise be way too complicated to get parametric. At least for me. Um, so there you have it. It's pretty simple. 
Now let's see if I can, uh, if we have this chamfer problem. These are the chamfers I was talking about. And they get sometimes screwed up. Let me hide everything. And you can see what should happen is you should have a chamfer around here. This one and here and inside. And now we have it here, which is wrong. This happens when you change the sizes. Um, now this one is correct. Let's fix this one. Double click. Three millimeter. Deselect all. And reselect. Hold control. Select this one, this one, and this one. Uh, set three millimeters. Set OK. OK, just did one. Three millimeters. Now it's fixed. Now you can go ahead and print it again. And to print, I would. Uh, uh, you can just select um, each piece and just select a piece, export um, to 3MF and then use Prusa, sli Prusa Slicer or something uh, like that to slice it. So let me show you how to slice this. Select all of our pieces, spread them out for ease first, and then um, let's see, this flat on the ground, this flat, this one can be printed like that, this one goes on that side, rearrange them, and then because this uh, this one has to go this this way round because it's um, you get uh, problems with now that I think about it why did I do this this way ah yeah because of the rim you get problems with this little um, little edge here which wedges into the uh, plate so you have to put a uh, printed uh, small side to top side um, to make this a little bit more secure I will add uh, where is it where is it where is it I want to add a brim uh, let's go to brim Brim type, outer and inner. Yeah, let's do five millimeters. Should be okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. A little bit of support there that helps, of course. You know what? Let's. Yeah, that should be should be should be plenty. So. There's just one little overhang, but that has not been a problem in my experience. 15% infill is very, very well. What you, I uh, use a six, uh, 0 0.6 millimeter nozzle, and uh, 30 millimeter layer height is also okay. So you end up with uh, about five hours and a bit. And originally, I also did. Um, finer layer height here so that the round part comes out better. Uh, this one's dynamic layer.
probably is a better way, but this is how I did it. That should be fine. Now you know this uh, roundness is a bit better. And of course you pay it pay for that with some more print time. But this is okay and we can go ahead and print this. <laughs> 